guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Amber. Today we're going to take a look at the cold frame my husband built for me and for our family so that we can have a four season garden. So we're going to walk through with him and he can explain a little bit of what's going on with that. And then afterwards I'll show you some of the resources we used um, and getting some ideas and some basic knowledge on that. So come on with me. Hey, so this is my husband Brian and he is the one that constructed my cold frame. So babe, can you explain the design a little bit for us? Well, we got the idea from Elliot Coleman, and the whole concept is it's basically a mini greenhouse you can put in your backyard. Um, it's the most important part is that you face it to the southern exposure and it put a little tilt to it. So I just used 2 by 12 regular pine, not treated, so it doesn't leach any chemicals in the ground. Which is very important for your soil. Yeah, you don't want that arsenic and whatever chemical they put in the treated stuff. And it's cheap. Um, we're not going to paint it, we're just going to let it weather. Um, you can paint it if you want on the outside, but it's just one more thing you got to maintain. So that's why we decided against it, but uh, I just used 2x12 for the frame. Use the full 2x12 in the back. And then I ripped the front 2x4 down to about 7 and a half inches. And um, used that as my guide to rip this on the angle so it goes from about 11 and a quarter to seven and a half inches so you get a little bit of a tilt so the sun can really get the full effect out. yeah right so the size of this one is i think i want with a 16 foot two by 12 and i was just able to cut it right in half so it's eight eight foot by four foot and it just gets a good box that you don't waste any material with. Um, right. We went with plexiglass just because we have kids and we're afraid in the future that if they break it with a ball or something like that, we didn't want shack shards of glass all over our plants and have to kind of scrap it because you can't find glass and dirt. Yeah. Um, but you can use storm windows if you have a good size storm window. Um, a lot of older homes have them, get them at salvage yards. Sure. Um, if you do that, you're going to have to size your box to the size of the frames, but we decided not to put hinges on our frames um, so that you could take them right off when you're gardening. So if you have a hinge, and you're, you have to constantly hold it up. So yeah. if you decide against that, I am going to make some adjustable um, posts to hold these up. For venting. Yeah, Amber can have a video of that later on for venting because it gets pretty hot in there. You're going to want a thermostat in there to regulate the temperature. Yep. Um, when you're doing your frames, if you're going to do it this way, um, you want to leave. You don't want any style or frame at the bottom so the water can roll off because if you have it where there's wood up against here, it's going to die into there and it's eventually going to rot it out. So that's kind of how we decided to do this. Maybe Amber could put a PDF up or something of um, how to put together the window. But basically, you're dadoing out the frames. I'm going to get a close up. You're just taking a regular 2x4, ripping it in half, and you're going to run your saw down the middle, if you have a table saw or not, to slide the plexiglass in. You could run it twice if you want, just so it's easy to slide the glass in. But um, it's pretty basic. I mean, you don't have to get too fancy with your frames. I mean, they're just for gardening. You can totally trick them out if you want to. You can do sprinkling systems inside, and you can have automatic venting systems. They sell online and probably at local gardening stores, but they are expensive. So if you're trying to do a garden to save money, you know, try to use whatever scrap or recycle product you can. Yeah. When you build your frames, I just decided to put a little hardware on the insides to keep them square because they're going to want a rack. But you can get some real inexpensive hardware screwed in there, kind of holds it square for you. There you go. Is there anything else? Were you able to find all your materials pretty locally, or did you? Well, I'm a carpenter, so I got a lot of those for scrap. <laughs> you can go to Home Depot. Any anywhere. big box store, really? Yeah, they check Craigslist, people are getting rid of lumber all the time. That's a good point. I mean, you can go bigger, you can go smaller, whatever you want to do. It's not really uh, a stick to format. You can really change it up to your needs. And you can have several of these guys all throughout your garden if you have colder climate. And then uh, we'll talk about the four season garden 
coming up here too. Well, thank you so much. No problem. Hey you guys. So we just checked out the cold frame that my husband built and I am so excited to put that in the garden and use it all throughout the winter. So um, as we move through the garden season in the fall and the winter, I have started planting um, onions and different root vegetables at different times. And I'll probably continuously be planting at different times like radishes, things like that, that come up pretty quick. I'll plant those, you know, probably once a month or so, so that I can transfer them in the garden um, and in the cold frame. So a few plants to really take a look at um, for your cold frame are those cold tolerant plants that will withstand temperatures below 50 degrees or, you know, 45 or so. So um, things like lettuce and spinach. Lettuce and spinach you can probably even winter over if you don't have the cold frame just using uh, garden fabric. Um, but there's also things like Brussels sprouts and some of your root vegetables, turnips, radish, carrots. Those guys actually really like the cold. They taste better with the cold. So those are definitely ones I'm going to be putting in my cold frame. And um, there's different methods too. So ours is a bottomless cold frame. Um, so we're going to be actually using the soil that's in our garden. If you don't have that kind of space, you can do a bottom on it and put your own soil in there. You just have to watch out for how deep you're going because you do want to allow for those roots to grow pretty far. Um, so the next thing is when you have the cold frame and you do have plants in there that might not be as cold tolerant, um, like if you're starting from seed or transplants, you do want to look into maybe a heat source. So you can use an electronic heat source. Um, another option is if you have it available, raw manure. Um, I know it sounds weird, but raw manure puts off a lot of heat. So if you have those not directly on your plants, because that might just kill it, but in the cold frame uh, around them, that might help. Um, and you definitely want to make sure you're, you're tracking your temperature. You don't want them getting too cold or you don't want them getting too hot. Um, unless you're putting your pepper plants in there in the middle you know, of the springtime so that they warm up pretty quick. You want to make sure that you're keeping them properly ventilated if needed, if they are getting too hot. Um, things like that. So definitely have your temperature gauge in there and uh, possibly a heat source. Um, and the second thing is um, to think about is uh, where are you going to put it? We definitely have ours facing the south um, so that it does get that southern exposure and that's probably the best way to do it so that you get the maximum amount of sunlight in there. Um, but you want to make sure that you're not shading other plants in your garden. So when we took a look at this, uh, we did our research and we saw a bunch of different methods to do it. And there are a bunch of different methods to doing it. Um, we kind of went with Elliot Coleman's. And this is his book that I inherited. And I'm very lucky that I did. He has a lot of great resources. Um, even if you're just interested in maybe building your own or making your own tools, um, he has a lot of that in his book as well. So take a look at Elliot Coleman. Um, he does a lot of this on a large scale. He actually had like a winter farmer's market before because he had so much produce in the winter time from his cold frame system. Um, so take a look at him and let me know if you have any questions or comments and please as always like and subscribe and we'll see you again next week. Thanks.